Hey, it's Kayla, and welcome to On the Fritz, uh, where we talk about books in a hot mess fashion. So today I'm doing my first tier ranking video. Uh, I want to do this for a lot of the fandoms that I'm a part of and my favorite series. And first up, if you couldn't tell, is Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. It's a sci-fi alien romance that I'm sure a lot of you have heard of. Maybe a lot of you have even read a few. Maybe even some of you like it as much as I do. So we have 17 or 18 books to go over. Uh, my tiers are love it, it was love it, it was good, it was okay, meh, and TBR because there was one of these that I haven't read yet. Okay, so starting off, we have Ice Planet Barbarians, book one. This is Georgie and Vectal's book. Um, I'm putting it as okay just because it was okay. Oftentimes, uh, alien or paranormal series, the first book or the first few books are kind of meh until it gets its stride later on. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Georgie. She's probably one of my least favorite heroines of the entire universe, actually. <laughs> Ruby's universe. Um, I just didn't like how, you know, she was portrayed as the leader of the humans, which she is, but really instead of out looking for help, uh, Vectel found her and they were just like having sex and that was before she even had a Kui and could talk to him. And, um, but I still like it and appreciate it for what it is. However, this is, and this is the beginning of everything, um, but it's okay. Next we have Barbarian's Alien. This is book two. This is Liz and Rahash's. So Liz is like a darling in this universe. Uh, Liz and Rahash uh, appear in like every single book in Ice Planet Barbarian's and in Ice Helm. Um, so for me, looking back, it's hard to remember if I thought their book was good or if it's like me remembering them as a character, like as a pair that appears in all these other books in the series. Uh, Liz is very um, hard headed, outspoken, um, independent lady. Um, she's obsessed with like Star Wars. And Rahash is grumpy, and it's this one is like enemies to lovers with very high chemistry. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna put it for good because I haven't reread it. I'd like to go back and reread the series. Number three, we have Barbarian's Lover. This is Kira and Ihako's book. Um, I'm gonna put it as okay. So for this one, Kira had a implant in her ear. And so she could always hear what the aliens were saying from the beginning, including the ones that um, stole them, their, their slavers. And so she's adjusting to that, knowing all the things, all the nasty things they've said. And um, she can tell that they're gonna, some other ones are gonna come back looking for them. And so that's like, the plot in this one is very exciting. Um, I remember loving Ihako. Ihako was like our first like funny um, hero of the bunch. Um, however, overall, it seems um, just to land in the okay spot um, as my first read through for them. Because it's kind of forgettable besides like the fact that more slavers are on their way to the ice planet. Okay, book four, Barbarian Mine. This is the one I first remember like really liking, so that's why I'm hesitant about Barbarian's Alien for Liz and Rahash. I think I'm thinking of them with rose-colored glasses. But Barbarian's Mine is Harlow and Rook. So Harlow goes missing early in the series. And um, it turns out uh, she was taken by an outcast member of the tribe who a lot of people didn't know existed. Um, he's been on his own for most of his life and he resonates to her and he like bonks her on the head and steals her. <laughs> so this one is fun. This one's very much like caveman, um, esque, um, 
a lot of these guys are, I mean, the barbar like, the Sukhwis are seen as primitive, um, because they are hunter-gatherers, low technology, etc. And so this is just, like, upped because Rook has been on his own for so long. This is very, like, touching. Harlow is a great, like, great character. She's one of my favorite heroines. Uh, she's very smart. She likes to build things. She likes to know how things work with the, the limited technology that they do have available. Uh, she also has a brain tumor, so um, it's interesting to read how her qui is affected by that. Um, and it's just fun to see them um, interact and um, deal with their language barrier because Rook does not have um, the, communica the communication laser um, knowledge of the human language. So I remember this was my first one that I really, really liked in the series. Barbarian's Prize. This is Tiffany and I do not remember the hero at all. So it's Tiffany and so Luke. So this one is like a friends to lovers. So at this point in the series, Tiffany and Josie are the only two unmated uh, human women in the tribe. And everyone's really um, drawn towards Tiffany anyways because of her dark skin and curly hair. She's very beautiful. And Josie comes up with the idea that there should be like a games competition to win the right to be Tiffany's uh, pleasure mate. So she doesn't like the attention and so like while the games are all going on she's like off to the side getting hanging out with Saluk and I believe like her and Saluk kind of come up with an arrangement to like um, practice kissing and maybe even um, practice like sexy times with each other um, so that she can be more experienced when it when she does resonate with someone. So this is has that like practicing, getting better for someone else trope, and also definitely friends to lovers. Um, this one's really sweet. Um, I'm putting it as okay just because um, I don't know, just because I want to. Okay, so next we have Barbarian Mine? Mate? Barbarian's Mate. This is a love it. This is Josie and uh, Hayden's book. I get all the H, there's a lot of H heroes. I think it's Josie and Hayden. So this is like hardcore enemies to lovers. Josie is now the last female uh, to resonate. Uh, she doesn't resonate earlier because she has an IUD. So her IUD falls out in Barbarian's Prize and like, there's like an epilogue. And she's excited, so she's like running around and she hears her quee start to hum and she's like, who is it? Who is it? And it's to Hayden who like hates her and she's like, oh man. And these two fight off the resonance mating for like at least a month. So this is like a slow burn that could be in the sense of they have already resonated and they're pushing it off to the point where like their bodies are like shutting down and they're getting sick because they haven't fulfilled resonance. Um, Hayden has a tragic backstory with, with the Kui sickness and he gets a new Kui. Um, he had a he had a mate with his original Kui, but they never fulfilled resonance either. And so like that kind of plays into him fearing that Josie could lose her life because she is getting sick because they haven't fulfilled residence and it gives them flashbacks to the quee sickness and all that stuff so it's just this is my favorite in the series uh, I love the build up and the enemies to lovers is really good in this one so that's like the first arc of the ice planet barbarians this next set um, these next two we have two new humans that join us um, the first up is Lila. So this is Barbarian's Touch. Uh, this one was good. Uh, Lila um, is deaf, so she talks through ASL. And Rokon is a little bit older of the heroes. Um, actually, he's probably the oldest of the heroes in this group. And he has a thing called the knowing. So he can like, he has like a sixth sense thing where he can like, um, predict the future, he can sense certain things, and uh, Lila gets stolen by another single guy, and Rokan has to go out and 
rescue her because he um, senses that there's gonna be a big storm coming in and they spend a lot of time together. There's the language barrier again because Lila only knows sign language so she teaches them sign language. It's very sweet. This one's um, even more slow burn. They don't resonate right away so there's no pressure for them to come together but it's just really sweet and I love these two characters individually and together. So next we have Barbarian's Taming. This has Maddie and Hassan, who both appear in the previous book. Maddie is Lila's sister. She's our first curvy big girl. Hassan is the one that stole Lila. So he gets um, exiled from the group. Maddie feels like an outsider. She's very angry. Um, she feels like she lost Lila because she resonated. Um, she feels outcasted because she's the only big girl. Um, so they kind of end up coming together because they both feel like outcasts. Um, so yeah, this one was okay. They're both, there's just a lot of anger in this one, which I like. I like that it's different. Uh, but looking back on all of them, I mean, it, it's okay. So these next three are kind of a different arc in their own. It's just people that have, there's no new people. Um, but at the end of Barbarian's Taming, there's an earthquake and they lose the caves that they've been living in and calling home for always. And so Barbarian's Heart is like a second chance. And so this is featuring Stacy, who is one of the original girls and her mate, um, Rokan. No, that's, I can't think of. Stacy and Pashov, Pashov. So they, they're one of the few that resonated right away. And we've seen them inside store, like we've seen them as side characters throughout the book. Um, but during the earthquake, um, Pashov gets hit in the head and he gets knocked out while everyone's like evacuating. Someone goes in and saves him. Um, he wakes up and he lost his memory. So he can't remember the past like two years or however long it's been. Yeah, about like I think two years of them being on the planet. So he has to learn to get used to humans all over again. He remembers his family, but he knows nothing about the human women and his mate and his child. And this is all happening when they have to evacuate and find somewhere else to live in the snow. It's in the brutal season, I'm pretty sure, which is like extra, extra cold. Uh, so it's very heartbreaking, but it's second chance in the sense that there's the amnesia trope, which is really fun. Um, but it's also heartbreaking for them and for the entire tribe uh, losing their home. So this one's very exciting. Uh, next we have Barbarian's Hope. This is my only meh of the bunch. Um, my least favorite book of Ruby Dixon's. This features two Masaka. I was really looking forward to it. So we have uh, Asha and Himalo, who resonated before, you know, before the series starts. Um, she was, since she's one of the few female uh, Masaka, or female Sakui, uh, she, you know, got to have her pick of the litter. Everyone would flirt with her. Um, she would bed hop. And she, her mate is um, not a hunter, but he's a tanner and he's very quiet and he lets the spotlight just be on Asha. And she kind of, I don't think she was very happy with her um, queen's choosing. Um, they resonate, they have a baby and she loses her baby soon after giving birth. And so she's um, you know, just very depressed and pushes Himalo away. She doesn't want him to be her mate anymore. And so you see this in the past few books building up. This is their coming back together. However, the biggest reason I didn't like it was because at least half or more was actually from another human's point of view, which is Claire. She's someone who hasn't, does not have their own book yet. And so, and she really doesn't like I don't even remember like how she's interwoven to the story because Ash is actually closer with some other human women, not Claire. So I felt like Ruby Dixon was just using this as a scapegoat to kind of write it as Claire's book, even though it had nothing to do with Claire. It was supposed to be about Ash and Himalo. So that's the reason why I didn't like it. Um, not because it was too, um, 
saw Queed characters and no human people. So that was disappointing. Um, but one that did work was Barbarian's Choice, and this is one of my levets. This is Farley and Mardok. So Farley is an, one of the other female um, Saquis, but she was younger. We're first introduced to her when she was like 14. She's very sweet, um, high energy, friendly to everybody. Everyone loves Farley, and she loves everybody. And we get another ship that's that comes and lands. Um, this one doesn't have any bad slavers, but this has the pirates um, that are kind of connected to the Corsair series, which is a novella series written by Ruby Dixon. And this these ha this ship has like four or five Masaka, which is the species that the Saqui come from. And um, so Mardok is very different because they're they're growing up is very different. He has capped horns, tattoos. Farley is very interested in him and he's very interested in Farley. Um, he doesn't have a qui, so it's really interested, interesting to see them come together when there's not that resonance thing going on. And then the choice is that if Farley should stay on her home planet or go and um, travel space with Mardok. This one's really good. Okay, so now we're entering another arc of the series. Um, we have Beck and Ellie. So Beck has been kind of our bad boy character for the last few books. He's very desperate. He's grumpy. He wants a mate. So he arranges a, a ship to bring some five human women to their ice planet. Ellie's one of them. Ellie has been enslaved since she was like 12. And so when we meet her, <coughs> she's dirty. She has her hair in front of her face. She doesn't, because it's a dis defense mechanism, because she doesn't want to be touched. Um, so it was fun to see, you know, these two kind of broken characters come together and heal with each other. Um, I just feel like it could have been done a little bit better, but I do like the plot shift that happens in this book. Barbarian's Lady, I honestly don't remember the plot to this one at all, so I should put it as okay. Um, I did rate it a four stars, but this one has Kate and I don't even remember the mate at all, but Kate is like really tall. She's 6'1", so she always felt um, like a sore thumb on Earth, but here she's with these really tall Sakui, and that's the only like plot point and character point I remember from that book. It was very forgettable. Barbarian's Rescue is my other love it. Uh, this one is Summer and Warwick. Summer is a chatterbox and Warwick is very qu a quiet cinnamon roll. So I love that dynamic. Um, much like I love Grumpy Sunshine, I love quiet cinnamon roll and chatterbox so much. So this one, there's another ship, a slaver ship that appears and this ship has all the characters of Ice Home. So that's another reason why I love this book is because the plot is very exciting. Summer and Warwick have to rescue um, their tribe's mates. A bunch of people get um, captured onto that ship. The ship doesn't fly off, but they have to make sure that they prevent it from flying off and save uh, their friends and family. Um, so that's really fun and exciting. Um, Barbarian's Tease is Brooke in Taoshin, I believe. Uh, Brooke has pink hair. She's a hairstylist. Taoshin is um, desperate. One of the other guys that is just desperate for love. He's one of the younger heroes. They are both captured um, on the ship in Barbarian's Rescue, and they're forced um, to like mate, and they're given um, aphrodisiac. And they're both, I mean, they're both willing, but like they're brought together by those terms. And so Brooke sees it as a one night stand and Tao Shin is, thinks that she's his pleasure mate now. So he's like following her around like a sick puppy, love sick puppy. And Brooke like is trying to push him away because you know, she wants to play the field or something like that. So it's just very like, I like that it's different. Um, but Brooke is another character that I don't like. And she has been appearing in a lot of the more recent books and I just I feel like that we could have picked anybody else but Brooke <laughs> I don't like her very much and so these last three 
Um, and the current books that are coming out are a like another arc of Ice Planet Barbarians. Um, so what's going on is that these are all human, like women from the original group that never got books, but they resonated right away. So there's a handful of women that just resonated and then they're just kind of side characters. They appeared in some of the baby novellas. So first we have Barbarians Beloved. Um, this one was good. This has, uh, I can't think of her name. I don't want to look it up. The heroine was the one that's always crying. Um, she has anxiety, we find out, and she's very scared and, you know, can't and handles things by crying. And so what always left a bad taste in my mouth was just like in other books, people just thinking poo poo on her because she's always crying. And so this one, we gotta, we gotta understand her more. And um, her mate that always tries to make her smile. Barbarian Seduction, this one's really fun. So this is Marlene and I can't think of her hero, but Marlene is French and she's very sexy and she's the one that's like they resonate but she's the one that's pursuing him and he's the one that's like kind of running away from her because he's um a shy simon role and um so this one's really fun i like the ch the dynamic change i love marlen um and marlen's mom died when she was a little bit younger and she always sees hearts and sees that as a sign from her mom so it's fun to see that incorporated in this storyline. And then Barbarian's Treasure, this one's Megan, and I can't think of her hero, Megan's story. I haven't read this one yet. I'm waiting for the audiobook in October. Um, Megan is poised as like very clingy, and her husband is very, you know, another like jokester and very easygoing, and um, he's been away at ice home and she's been home so i think it's kind of that story of them coming back together um along with these new ones so the beginning of the story is said as a present tense so basically during the happenings of ice home and it does a flashback to when they first resonated and them coming together and it flashes back to the present day most of them are pregnant with like their second or third baby and I think a lot of the heroes have been going off to Ice Home, and so the heroes are coming back to their mates. Um, that's kind of the theme with these um, current books in Ice Planet Barbarians. So let me quickly adjust these. So for the OKs, I feel like, yeah, Ice Planet is like towards the end, and then Brooke, least favorite women. Uh, so let's see, Kira, Tiffany, um, Maddie, Ellie, and then here, let's see, Harlow's one of my favorites, Liz, Lila, <coughs> Stacy, oh, what's her name, it's like, there's an A, I can't think of it, and then definitely like Marlin's better, and then those three, boom, 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 so my number one favorite is Barbarian's Mate with Josie and Hayden, and my least favorite, um, because of the way it was written is uh, Asha and Himalo. But besides that it would be these two, <laughs> Georgie and then Brooke and then their mates. So that's a my tier ranking for Ice Planet Barbarians. Let me know what your favorite and least favorite of this series is if you've read them all. Um, the series gets better if you're if you read them and didn't like them at least a few of the early ones i do recommend ice home ice home is way better that's where i started and then i went back um and ice home ruby does a really good job about bringing in the background information and letting you know everything you need to know so that you're not totally lost so Thank you so much for watching. This is my second time recording this. My voice is like going out. If you made it this far, I leave like a little alien emoji in the comments. Uh, down below, um, we can be friends. Goodreads, social media links and stuff are down below. Subscribe if you want to see more alien content from me. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.